Hello, my name is Barbara Buchley, and I'm here to tell you some of my story. I grew up in the mountains of Montana. When I was a child, I used to go to Catholic school for a couple years, and every day we had to go to church. The nuns called it God's house. They said it was His Mass. So every day I would look around for God. Because I had to ask Him a question, I wanted to ask Him why He took my mom away. You see, when I was two, my mom died. And I never understood why, if there was such a loving God, why He would take a child's mother away. So I'm looking up and down the aisles, looking for God. As the priests come out, I'm expecting God to be with them. I can't find him anywhere. I, I'm, I'm asking people. I said, where is God? This is his house. This is his mass. When does the guy arrive? The nuns are hitting me over the head. They're saying, sit still. You are a troublemaker. I said, I'm trying to find your husband. They said, what do you mean? I said, you said you're married to Jesus. And Jesus is God. So I'm looking for God. Where is he? Where is your husband? Well, they labeled me as a smarty pants, and they'd brought me up to the front of the church where troubled kids sat, and they put me in the chair so that all the children could laugh at me. And I didn't understand it because I truly believed that God was real. I truly believed that I could see Him, and I didn't understand why I was being punished for trying to find God because I had to ask Him about my mother. As the masses went by, I just sat there quietly, wondering if I would ever see God. And finally, during one of the sermons, the priest said how Jesus climbed the mountains to hear God and to talk to God. And I said, that's where God is. He's on the mountains. And so, living on the backside of a mountain, I was so happy that soon after school got out, I was climbing up that mountain as high as I could go, which was about 20 feet. And I would sit in the tall weeds and I cried out to God. I said, God, do you hear me? And for the first time in my life, I heard God, and he said, I'm all around you. I said, God, why am I so different from the other children? Why did you take my mom away? God said, I made you different. I needed you to be different, because I needed you to be unlike all the other people out there, because one day I'm going to need you. I'm going to call you into your service, into your mission. I will reveal this mission to you when you are thirty-nine. Thirty-nine, I said. I'll be dead by then. That's old. Then at sixteen, my appendix ruptured. As my father carried me into the hospital and placed me on the gurney, all of my pain suddenly left as this white light coming down from the upper left-hand corner of the room, just a brilliant, peaceful light, just covered me like a blanket and I was in total peace and I could see myself leaving my body and looking down and I saw my brother crying he said it's gonna be okay Barb it's gonna be okay and I couldn't tell him I'm okay for the first time in my life I had total peace total joy total happiness and I was drawn up into this light but I couldn't go all the way up. God said, you can't come up here yet. It's not your time. You have to go back. I said, I'm not going back down there, God. My life has been too hard. You see, since my mom died, I stopped talking. I only climbed the mountains and I would talk to God. God said, you have to go back. I said, God, I'm a freak down there. I can't even talk to my own parents. God said, I'll make things different, but you have to go back. And for three days I lie there, not wanting to come back into my body, not wanting to come back into this dark world, filled with so many angry people. I didn't understand why people, especially children at that age, were so angry and mean. But I came back on a promise that God said things would be different. And after I got out of the hospital... As I'm sitting there at the dinner table with my family, my father can't even eat his dinner. He's sitting there staring at me because I'm talking for the first time in my life. I'm so busy talking, no one else can even get a word in. And my father said, I think I brought home the wrong kid because this is not the same kid I brought to the hospital. 
and from that moment on, from that day on, that day in the hospital where I encountered that white light, where I heard God's voice send me back, miracles, huge miracles began happening to me all the time. I got a staph infection from the appendix and I spent the next seven years going in and out of hospitals all over. I was going into severe anaphylactic shock and my life was slowly draining again. Doctors had given up on me and they sent me over to a science lab where they paid me to be a human lab rat. They said I would have less than a year to live. They gave me six months to live. They said you'll never see your 25th birthday. But God was so good that he healed me again. Stay tuned for part two of my life story. God bless you.